So let's see how this framework can be used to apply zero noise extrapolation. So zero noise extrapolation, first let me explain what, what it is. So it's an, uh, a very intuitive way of uh, reducing the noise of a computation. So imagine that you plot in this diagram the value of an expectation value on the y axis and the level of noise on the x axis. Actually, we call this lambda. And we normalize the noise such that when lambda is equal to one, we are actually executing the circuit at the hardware noise. And so if we measure an expectation value, we get a point at this lambda equal one axis. What we would like to know is the value of the expectation value at lambda equal zero, because it is the zero noise limit. But unfortunately, of course, we, we cannot measure this value. What can be done is to increase the level of the noise to, to larger values of lambda to take basically uh, different measurements with different lambda. And then when you have all these uh, blue points, you can fit a model. In this case, it's an exponential fit and extrapolate to the zero noise limit. This will be the error mitigated expectation value. And as you can uh, understand from this plot, there are two main requirements to do this. You first need to scale the noise in some way because it's not so trivial to increase the noise of a computation. And also you need to decide which kind of model you want to fit to your data. And basically these two steps correspond exactly to the two main steps that I've shown you before in the general workflow of MITIC. So to apply this, MITIC uh, compiles the input circuit into a set of noise scale circuits. And I will explain soon how this can be done. These circuits are executed on the hardware. The measurement results are collected. These are all the blue points that we have seen before. And depending on the uh, extrapolation model, you get an error mitigated expectation value. So how can we generate noise scaled circuits? So we want to scale the noise. What does it mean to scale the noise of a circuit using a compilation approach? So actually the, the one of the first way in which noise was proposed to be scaled was in this paper by Temme, Bravi and Gambetta. They are yeah, IBM uh, researchers and they proposed a very nice trick, which is you take a circuit and you just apply the same circuit, but uh, stretched along a, a larger amount of time. So you just take the physical pulses that you send to the qubit and you stretch them in time. In this way, you get uh, <clears throat> the same, in principle, the same circuit, but since you are uh, applying a longer computation, you are actually increasing the effective noise that acts on the circuit. And this can be considered as an analog, analog way of stretching the circuit. In principle, you can also do this in a digital way. So without acting on the physical control pulses, you can try to increase the effective length of the circuit by compiling the input circuit with a larger number of gates. And the techniques that are used mainly in MITIC are these two. Are one, the first is called local folding and uh, the second is global folding. So in local folding, each gate is replaced by, each gate G is replaced by G, G dagger G. And since G dagger G is the identity. Basically, you are in principle, if you have an ideal simulator, you are doing nothing to the circuit. But in practice, if you use a real device, you are increasing the noise. And in a very similar way, you can apply global folding, 
which means that now you apply this trick to the full circuit, or at least to a full set of layers of the circuit. And again, in the same way as before, you increase the effective length of the circuit. And so you increase the effect of gate errors in the, in the computation. So this is... Yeah, this yes. is really nice to skip. Would you take a couple questions on local versus global folding? Yes. Um, so with global folding, you have your global circuit has to be the identity. So you can only apply that to certain circuits. Is that right? Actually, uh, or, or, well, I guess, sorry, maybe I misspoke. Yes, if you can do so the what, inverse. Yes. Exactly. So yes. what is the identity is G dagger G. And you are left with your original circuit. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I, and can you say a little bit more on um, kind of the uh, how important is the the way in which you scale between these? Because they're not probably going to lead to the same type of effective lambdas and scaling as as if you were stretching the gates. Uh, have, do you know if people have looked at that and how important that is, or how that affects parameters? Yeah. So. We this is a, still a matter of research, but uh, we have experiments in which uh, both techniques have been applied and they seem to, to more or less agree and work for zero noise extrapolation. But what is better, what is optimal, we also don't know exactly. It's, uh, we are working on this, but uh, it's an open question. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I will show experiments in, in the next slides. Okay. Great. Yeah, maybe I'll hold off. Uh, hold off there. Okay. Okay. So just to give a practical example, if you want to do this with Qiskit, assume that you define a very simple circuit, Hadamard followed by a control knot. You can simply now call these functions, which are called global folding, for example, and you apply it. You can choose the scale factor. In this case is three, and what you get is a new circuit equivalent to the original one, but with three times more gate than the original one. And uh, this is the simplest case, but in principle, these functions are defined to work also with intermediate values of lambda, not just integers, not just odd integers, but even any arbitrary real number larger than one. And once you have this, basically, you can apply the first part of zero noise extrapolation. Then you execute all these circuits, and we are still back to the problem of the inference. How can we extrapolate to the zero noise limit? And again, this is also, uh, there are different methods to do this, and they are, uh, some of them are built in, in MITIC. For example, you can uh, use uh, linear extrapolation, Richardson extrapolation, polynomial, exponential, even adaptive algorithms. And <clears throat> all these methods can be uh, uh, encapsulated, so can be defined by uh, individual uh, factory objects. So the, the, we have a class for this, which is the factory class, and each factory can represent a different extrapolation method. And this is the experiment that I, I was uh, speaking before, in which we used uh, a randomized benchmarking circuit executed on IBM hardware and also on Rigetti hardware, in which we scaled the noise using unitary folding, and we use different inference models to understand which one is better uh, for this kind of device. And actually, uh, what we found is that, yeah, usually the exponential one makes sense, especially if the, you expect an exponential decay like this, but it's not always the case. So sometimes it is better to use linear extrapolation, polynomial, and so on, as shown, for example, this example here. 